and I've seen them. I've seen them. That's probably like, he's probably got his head down thinking, this ain't right. I always go when you put a collar on me. Let me get the lady. This is her second time ever being out by herself, ain't it? You ain't talking to me, are you? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how many times you've taken her. I think her eyesight's off or something. <laughs> Depth perception <laughs> is not very good. She jumps like six foot out. <laughs> You may like it. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> All right. Let's see what this crazy dog will do. So how old did I say she was? Eight months? Mm -hmm. It's going to be eight months. Take the time out by herself. May not do anything. And that's okay. I'm in no hurry for her to get fired off. Just wanting to get her out and have her run in the woods a little bit without another dog.
I think a puppy or a young dog. I've seen them start as early as like four months old, uh, kind of going hunting, doing their own thing. And I've seen them, I've seen them be as late as 18 months old. Uh, a lot of people, if you go up north, you talk to a lot of people and they're like, well, if our dogs ain't started by the time they're six months, we kind of move on to the next one. But here uh, in Alabama, or me personally, I don't want a dog. I don't like them starting too early because I feel like they get burnt out. Uh, I kind of look at it just like a a kid in sports. If you take a kid in sports and he's doing good and you keep pushing him and pushing him, most time by the time he's a, you know, 10th, 11th grader, he's, uh, he hates the sport. So I'd rather take a dog and let it do its own thing at its own pace. And if it's 11, 12 months old when it starts going hunting and treeing, that's fine. So, a young dog like her, she's she's eight months old. This is her second time ever going alone. She's been with an older dog. She goes with an older dog. So now, in my mind, in my personal opinion, I'm not doing her any good by taking her with another dog. Uh, for one, okay, if that other dog's got bad habits, so now not, all, not only do I have one dog doing bad habits, I'm gonna have two dogs doing bad habits. So I'm gonna single this dog out. She may not go hunt. She's not hunting right now. I mean, she's not right here at my side, but you know, she's going out 50, 60 yards. We may sit here for an hour and, and she may go on and go 500 yards. But she, I'm not gonna force her to go hunting. She's gonna do it on her own. And when they do it on their own, when they strike a hot uh, a hot coon, you know, they're gonna learn from that point on, okay, why well, I struck this, it's hot, so now I treat it. And everyone that they treat by themselves, they, they just build confidence up. And that makes them a better dog. And I'm not saying that, that you know, by doing that, you're you're going to raise a world champion dog. Everybody dreams of it, but I kind of let I let them do what they're going to do on their time. Uh, putting them in the woods, bringing them hunting, daytime, nighttime. I mean, take them out in the woods during the day if you go squirrel hunting, or if you're going and checking game cameras, or or just out walking with your kids. Take them hunting, take, or take them out in the woods. They get used to it. Things that you can do as far as a puppy, a lot of people, a lot of people don't want puppies. They they get aggravated. They and and they are. They're aggravating. But to watch them tree for the first time is like the best feeling in the world. Uh, you know, taking them in the woods. I, I mentioned that things that that you can do while they're not going hunting is you can you can uh tone break them which is with a with a garmin or with a dog i guess a dog truck does the same thing you can do it with a whistle a piece of rope you know you tie a rope to them and, and let them get out so far and whistle and bring them back to you that's that's you know teaching them stuff that that will help you in the long run uh, out in the woods, like if if she's off, you know, seven, eight hundred yards and I wanted her back, I could take a whistle and whistle and get her back. Not her. She's not. I haven't got her trained to do that yet, but. How do you do that? Uh, you can, uh, there are several different ways. Uh, you can take a, like I said, you can take a, a piece of rope. Uh, start out with like say a 25 foot rope and just let her let her go you can do this in your yard during the day just let her go out so far when she gets to the end of that rope blow the whistle and tell her to come and pull her back to you whether she wants to come or not just blow the whistle pull her back to you pet her up give her a treat okay then the next time let her go out 
get a 50 foot rope. Let her go out 50 foot, whistle, pull her back to you. Give her a treat. Uh, and eventually, after that, after doing that a couple of times, you can you can turn them loose. And don't even have them on a rope. Whistle. When they come back to you, give them a treat, and that, they'll pick it up. What about an older dog like Preacher? Is that how you're going to work with him? Uh, yes. Yes, I, I'll do that. And uh, you can also use uh, a training collar, like what she's got on. It's a train and track, so I can... I can tone her, which is I hit a button and it, it beeps. And uh, Preacher is tone broke, but I don't have him to where he'll come to a whistle. So what I can do is I can let him get out in the yard or, or whatever, and I can whistle and hit that tone button at the exact same time and tell him come. When he does that a time or two, give him a treat, and then... Uh, the next time, just just don't even hit the tone, you know. Just keep doing it until they till they learn it, and and they'll eventually get the hang of it. Would you suggest both? Like you said, if you do one of the big hunts, you have to use a whistle and not a tone. Yeah, you like, can't use a you can't use like in in a in a in a competition UKC PKC any of the any of the competition hunts, uh, probably besides a buddy hunt. I don't know a whole lot about them, but you're you're not allowed to uh you're not allowed to use a, a training collar which has a the tone button or the shock button. So you know, to for a dog's safety in a competition, if if a dog starts getting close to a highway or 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 starts getting close to a, a property line that's uh, off limits for hunting. You know, somebody don't want you over there hunting. Uh, a lot of people use whistles. A lot of people just holler and they, they, you know, some dogs will come back when you just holler their name. But uh, a whistle is probably the best thing and the loudest. You know. Okay. I'll stop at 45 yards. <laughs> I mean, from the look of her track, she's, you know, possibly smell. I mean, she's possibly smelling where a coon had been, or a squirrel, or something. She's going on with it.
Done. Done. Find your good life right there. Come on. Is that right? I'm gonna walk right over here then. And I use them here with them. Come here. 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 Come Go home.